Love, love, love this story. The man born blind who Jesus healed. And then uh, the people couldn't figure out what in the world had happened, how it had happened. Then they go to his parents and ask. But here's a nugget that I've never seen in the story. John chapter 9 is where it's found. In verse 3, Jesus, they asked him, why was this dude born blind? And Jesus says, it was not because of his sins or the sins of his parents. This happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. So why does stuff go wrong in our lives? Why do, you know what, our entire lives, everything, the parts we understand and all the rest, all of it is for God's glory. All of it, the pain, the hardship, the struggle, it's all for God's glory. This guy lived his entire life blind. Bam, for not only a moment, but for a purpose. Now, I've missed this. I thought, previously, I thought that this man lived his entire life blind for a bam moment so Jesus could show his power. And that certainly is part of it. But Jesus reveals his glory. I'm sure there's more, but according to this uh, limited mind, two ways. Number one, to take a man that was blind and make him be able to see. But here's number two. This is a crazy story. Where this dude comes to Jesus blind, Jesus spits, put mud, puts mud in his eyes, and tells him to go dip in the, in the river Siloam, in the pool of Siloam. That obedience revealed the glory of Jesus. Not just the miracle that happened after the obedience, but the fact that the dude endured, first of all, not an instantaneous healing. Can anybody relate? Secondly, something that took his bad situation and made it worse, mud added to blindness from a stranger spitting in the mud. And that's an easy thing to preach, but the reality is a lot of times things go from bad to way worse while everybody's watching. Not that he knew because he's blind. So not only does he come blind, and then he's told that this happened for the glory of God, the next thing he feels is warm mud on his face. Then he's told, go to the pool, which he can't find because he's blind, he's got mud on his face, big disgrace. So the reality is, the reality is, notice in John chapter nine, when this now former blind dude, which by the way is what he's referred to, we don't even get to know his name, we get to know what he used to struggle with, hello. We, he's referred to as the man formerly blind. But when he tells his story, he tells the whole story, including the mud, including the pool of Siloma, Siloam, and including the healing. So here's the final point. The point is God wants to reveal his glory through us, through the miraculous things he does, and through the obedience that we express. The illogical, God, is this really necessary? God, how does this make sense? God, how does this help us get from A to B? I feel like you're adding all kinds of letters in between. Can you just heal me for your glory? And the answer is yes. But God's question to us is, I can heal you for my glory, but will you obey? Will you obey through delay? Will you obey through mud? Will you obey on a guided walk to a pool of Siloam that seems unnecessary? Lord, reveal your glory through your miraculous power and by your grace through our obedience.